Hello everyone, today we are going to look at the assimilation of the project whereby you are able to understand better how to conduct this project. Please note that this project is not giving you the answers but it's just a guide to, to do the project perfectly well. That's why we say that on Thunder Eduk will always help you so that we see that every child of this country is able to pass. All right. So what you need, you need bread. Uh, it doesn't mean that you're supposed to buy Albani, but if you have money to buy Albani, that's good. You need different slices, but in this case, we are not going to use all of them. We are just showing you how to prepare this practical. So we have a slice of bread. So number two, you need to have a plastic bag. You need to have a plastic bag. Then you need to have also another plastic bag. I'm gonna show you on the rest. And then you also need to have this grid. Don't forget that they told you to print this grid on a, a plastic or paper which can you can put down or down like this and then you measure the number of boxes which have been covered. But imagine you don't have, therefore you have to improvise. You can't say that uh, the kids are not going to do the practical because you don't have. You don't have the printers which can print on that. Therefore, that's why I came with this option so that everyone can do this practical. All right, so now you have this plastic bag. So get two plastic bags. The first one is going to be used to keep the bread. The second one is going to, we're gonna use it to print on it, but we're gonna print on it from here. So now what you need to do, if you have two options, the first option, uh, some of you might think that you don't have this. You can use the plastic bag for maguinha. So put it inside. If you see that it doesn't fit inside, you have another option. So when you put it inside, bring a ruler, this ruler, and then use a transparent ruler. Why? Because you are able to see what is down. Because if you use the opaque one, you won't be able to see, uh, you end up uh, making the lines zigzag. So, um, you also need a permanent marker. Why do we need a permanent marker? Because when you draw it, it won't be able to rub. You understand? It won't, you won't clean it up. All right. Now, if you have access to a permanent marker with a small, uh, a small uh, head, I don't know how do you call it, don't care, but as long as you have a permanent marker, now what you need to do is to draw. How do you draw? Saying that, uh, you draw these lines. You see, you draw these lines using a permanent, a permanent marker. You have to draw until you finish them. Yes, keep on drawing, and then you also draw this side. I think you draw this side, draw. You see, they are not rubbed off, they remain there. So at the end of the day, after drawing, yeah, you will end up having something like this. After drawing. After drawing, now you remove this plastic. The moment you remove this plastic, it will look exactly the same as that one which has been printed. So you're going to use this. Yeah, you don't have a printer, but you have the head, you have the resources around you. Now, okay, imagine your paper cannot go inside. So now here, if the paper can't go inside uh, the plastic bag, it means that the plastic bag is a little bit smaller. For example, like this, still it is fine. What you need to do is you have to come with the ball stick. Yes, I went to pick and pay. I also bought another ball stick. You see, you can go there, even shop right. Anyway, anything which is next to you. So what you do, you remove this you make it stick you see in one position you make it stick in one position you make it stick in one position you see yeah then you also make it stick in this position permanent marker and then now start drawing start drawing mm -hmm. you see you are drawing you see, it's gonna be exactly the same as the other one. You see, now when you draw, 
at the end of the day you draw you draw all of them you draw all of them i'm not going to draw all of them because of at least you have seen what i'm talking about you understand you draw all of them you draw all of them after that you remove you remove this when you remove this you see that the squares they are starting you see they are starting so if you keep drawing it will come out the same way like this so i think now the grid is fine now the next point is how do i use the grid to measure how do i use the grid to measure uh, i'll show you even on a computer how uh, basically how do you use the grid to measure so now imagine this is our bread ne? Day one, it looks like this. Day two looks like, well, I don't know. So now what you need to do is to put this, yes, on the bread. If the grid is too big over the grid, over the what? Uh, the, the, the grid, yes. Uh, you can mark that this is point number one, this is point number one, this is point number two, this is point number three, this is point number four. And check the way how the bread is. So that when you remove, eh, when you bring another bread, you know exactly where it's supposed to. One, two, three, you see? Yes. So that you don't mess it up. Now, imagine I have um, done this experiment for long and then for days. And then what happens? This becomes... Uh, you see, that becomes our our mold growing on the bread. You see, that becomes our bread mold. So how do I measure? It becomes our bread mold. How do I measure this? How do I measure this? Check, but check, check. Clearly, I will come here. Let me make it a little bit uh, zoomed. Yes. Think now you can see clearly. Yes. Yes. So now, so now I think you can see. Yes, clearly. Now I will start counting. When I count, I will see that this box, check, it's almost half. So I will say that's number one. This is almost half, that's number two. This is only this part, not even half. So I won't count it. Why? Because this, they said half or more. If you check here, they say that, they said that, what did they say? They said that more than half square is equal to one centimeter. And less than half square is equal to zero. Please take note of that. Don't just count. Yes. So you count them. One. This is one. Because this one is not... Okay, this one has a part and also has a part. It's almost a half. So one, two. This part is there, but it's too small. So I don't count it. So I will know that's one, two, three, four. Then I come here. It's almost half. Five, six, seven. Mm, this one is also eight. So I count them. Nine. But this one is not half. So I leave it out. Nine, this is more than half. Nine, ten. This one is small, no? 10, so here I have 10. Then I come here, 11, it's, it's, it's less than half. This one is more than half, 12, it's more than half, 13, 14. So you count them like that. So after counting, you record that it's grid, you see? So that when you, 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 you measure from there, you understand? You know exactly that that's my bread. I'm not going to change it. So I keep on counting. Every day I have to come at the same time to check and see how much space I've covered. So now, how do we calculate for the area? Because this is helping you to know how much you have covered. But how do I calculate for that area? So let's go to the computer and then show you just a little bit so that you don't stress that much. You understand? You don't need to stress that much so that and what are some of the expectations that if you divert from that, your project or your answer could be probably not right. This is our grid of which this grid, if you look at the bread, it's 10 centimeters this side and also 10 centimeters this side. 10 centimeters, not 10 centimeters squared. 10 centimeters, 10 centimeters, 
yes so each each box is one centimeter one centimeter even this side is one centimeter so they are like 10 here and also down there like 10 so which is equal to 100 centimeters squared so basically this is 100 centimeters squared uh, meaning that there are 100 boxes in there so now how do i calculate for the area let's continue and we see if you see that uh the bread is uh, the mod is just a small dot like this five five percent of the box count it as zero ten percent is bigger than this but ten percent count it zero twenty five percent still count it zero when it is fifty percent you round out off to the nearest uh hundred uh, percent therefore here i'm gonna count it as one centimeter of one box one box and then this one if the 75 percent also i'm gonna count it as one so now if this is our grade and this is our bread down so if do i count this no do i count this no there is now this one whereby it is between this and this you understand do i count it as one no i won't count because here it is not half and this side is not half so what about this this one is more of this side and almost covering the box so i'll count this one as one this one is too small this side so i will count it as zero what about this it's covering this this and this i'll count this one as one but i won't count this and i won't count this so that's how we count as time goes on it keeps on growing and growing and growing yes so basically that's how we're supposed to uh, calculate so basically uh, after the results this is an expectation of what something which is maybe in the warm environment it will have to grow very fast that's why we find out that uh, our bread uh, gets spoiled in summer than in winter and then the one which is in the fridge it looks to be growing but not that much it will take much time that's why i'm saying that if your bread you, you want it to last put it in the fridge what about in the deep freezer because the environment there the environment there is not favorable at all it will remain the same way it was so the bread mold will not grow there so guys i'm saying could you replicate this graph is a question or oh, your graph looks different after after doing your experiment do you think your graph is going to look like this if it's different what is the reason what have you done really what have you done to make this one to be different so we have done this but this is not this this will not give you uh, your answer so you have to go and do the practical yourself this is just a simulation i'm doing this as a simulation to guide you to understand yes so basically uh -huh. so now uh when you're plotting they can ask you to plot either maybe in the in the percentages or just in centimeters because each box since each box is centimeters is one centimeter if i have 10 boxes therefore i'm gonna have 10 centimeters and these 10 centimeters when did i get them so this one is the same thing if it is uh, zero on day one is day one maybe these are days it's day one day two day three day four day five day six day seven day eight day nine day ten so now at day one is all of them they are zero zero you see now it is four it is four boxes twelve boxes you understand is equal to twelve centimeters you understand i can also convert them into percentages yes for example if it is ten divided by because i have a hundred boxes so out of a hundred i have ten therefore this could also be indicated as percentages so it could be percentages could be centimeters so doesn't matter so depending on how the question looks like temperature this is just we are just trying to investigate about the temperature so temperature is not the only factor which could affect the rate of mold growth it could be even other factors but maybe this experiment it has a specific factor it is investigating about and what is that factor think about it yes i won't give you the answer just have to think about it why is this bread mode important why 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 should we spend millions and millions of uh, uh dollars or millions and millions of runs to do these uh experiments basically bread mold or mold it brings about in the spoilage of our food that's why 
factories or industries or, or whatever companies countries they have to invest a lot in this so that you see this restaurant imagine kfc you go tomorrow is 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 is, is, is already bad will you buy it again or chicken licking or whatever you want so we have to look for uh things which are going to help us to keep this food for a long period of time you buy a glossary for uh for, for a month you buy it once in a in a month you see how do you keep it that's why it is very important i won't discuss that much because you have to go and read so what are some of the importance of bread mold bread mold it, remember that is a fungus uh it, even like mushroom yes it it grows uh in in on, 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 on organic matter so it breaks it down yes so basically why is it breaking it down the, the the instance of it breaking it down not it is it it is having these things are having a problem it's just to get the nutrients for them to grow that's it and in those those uh and in do in so doing then uh it breaks down and then kills the 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 the, the bread then number two is also important for use uh production of penicillin this is medication also it can be used in the uh clean uh, uh the, the cleaners yes mold is one of the uh, nature's imagine all of us we stay we don't we don't decay and then what about what how what will happen so these uh, uh organisms they must be there to decompose these organic substances so that the nutrients can be recycled Yes, so it is important in ecology. It could be in ecology, it could be uh, economic wise. Yes, so we use uh, mold flour in so many foods, such as blue cheese, soya, uh, soy sausage. Yes, in the sauces. So basically, we use this uh, mold in many instances so guys uh, i think uh that is enough to enlighten you how you can do this practical what is the expectations uh i've not given the answer so you better go and do your work properly so that you are able to obtain the answer so that and your answer must be different from another one answer because you are not using the same bread mold this was just a simulation a guide just to show you how you supposed to conduct because there are so many teachers so many students so many people i don't know whether teacher or students are asking me please help so that i can uh, conduct this experiment thank you very much uh, don't forget to like to subscribe and share always so that you don't miss out our daily classes today we are supposed to talk about meiosis but we didn't talk about it because of the requests uh, people or we are receiving at thunder eduke keep yourself on thunder eduke uh, so that you don't miss out importantly. Thank you.